Shelby Bush administration and Monica Medina, who served as principal deputy NOAA administrator during the Obama administration. I spoke to them just before airtime. Monica, can you just explain why this matters? That I mean, it's one thing to say your crowd size as inauguration are bigger than they are. Why is this so concerning to you? This, mat- this matters because the president's changing of that weather map really crossed a line in terms of the sanctity of the weather forecast. It's important that the National Weather Service speak with one voice in unison because they communicate to all the weather forecasters out there in the country about what's the real forecast, what's the most up-to-date information. And it has to be up-to-date because the storms can change, as w- we've seen. And when, uh, when you saw that statement from NOAA that was put out to back up what the president had said, uh, it wasn't signed. And that's significant. It was significant because the agency really wasn't willing to stand behind it. And the leaders wouldn't say no, that they wouldn't put it out. And it clearly had a chilling effect on the agency. And it made those weather forecasters think twice about whether or not to put out the most up-to-date information if it was going to look like it contradicted the president. What they did was completely routine. What they did was exactly what we would have expected them to do when I was at NOAA, which is to get the most up-to-date information out to the public as quickly as possible. Richard, I mean, to say this out loud sounds ludicrous, but but as you pointed out, I mean, we, we have federal employees getting reprimanded for accurately disclosing scientific truth. We do. And uh, this is yet one more instance of the Trump administration distorting facts in order to cover for the president politically, presenting alternative facts in Kellyanne Conway's uh, language. And now it's affecting the weather. It's affected our national intelligence reports. It's affected our approach to climate change and other scientific evidence about environmental degradation from sulfide mining and all sorts of things. And now we even have politicized weather reports. Uh, What are they going to come up with? Tornado watches in certain counties of uh, uh, Pennsylvania and Ohio on Election Day? I mean, this is crazy. And that we tolerate this is crazy. We need to have an investigation, a criminal investigation, of what happened here in the United States House Oversight Committee uh, to convene a hearing. Monica, I mean, you worked uh, at NOAA under two, under uh, in the Clinton administration and also in the Obama administration. Would this have happened? I mean, has ever has this ever happened before? This is completely unprecedented in the modern era, and it's why those rules about and the criminal statute was put in place. There is a criminal statute to protect the accuracy of the forecast so that everyone speaks with one voice clearly. In the past, that wasn't the case a long time ago, 100 years ago. And that really was a dangerous situation, caused people to die. And so the, the bureau at the time, the Weather Bureau, uh, set procedures in place and Congress put that law into place to protect the public. I mean, Richard, you know, there are a growing number of Democrats who are already calling for Secretary Wilbur Ross to step down. The New York Times is reporting the inspector general from the Commerce Department is going to be taking a look at the NOAA statement. Do you think he should resign? Yes, he should. Uh, The president of the United States should also resign. He's been lying, you know, right and left about everything. And once again, this is affecting our weather reports, intelligence reports, other scientific data, economic data will almost certainly be distorted before election day. This is a president who has no understanding of the truth. He needs to be impeached. And this is just one more example of it. We can't even get an accurate weather report with Donald Trump in office. You know, and for, yes, people's lives are in danger. And I mean, you know, for days, uh, people, we, people have been discussing this and saying, well, this is ridiculous that we're even discussing this, talking about, you know, a Sharpie thing on a map and, and uh, you know, a, a false statement the president made uh, and, and then refuses to correct or even just move past. But if, if the head of the Commerce Department is spending time uh, trying to get, you know, and threaten uh, with firings people in NOAA, there's no telling what else. If you're willing to do that for something as meaningless as trying to cover up for the president making a error, um, there's no telling what else is going on. Well, exactly. You have no idea what's going on with nuclear weapons in North Korea, for example. And do you trust this Pentagon? Do you trust the uh, intelligence services under Donald Trump to present accurate information about whether there is a nuclear threat in North Korea? I certainly don't. And that's just one example. It's a very dangerous situation where this president lives in a world that consists entirely of his own lies. 
Anderson, I agree. And I really worried that this was the kind of thing that the Commerce Secretary might have done when I saw that statement. It looked like it was under duress. And to me, it crossed the line. And he should resign. Monica Medina, I appreciate you being with us. And Richard Painter, thank you.